everyone welcome back to the channel so i'm going to be flipping through this beautiful book today wonderful little world volume three hobbies so this is by the company Collier, who's very kindly sent me this book to review and coloring on the channel so this is hobbies so inside you're going to find lots of different hobbies inside maybe you might even see a coloring or painting page inside so the format of these books always remains the same it's sort of an a4 a4 format spiral bound at the top beautiful beautiful paper in this book so it's like a really really thick smooth card stock absolutely perfect for alcohol markers any mediums but alcohol markers i feel work like a dream on this paper i tend to use them as a base in these books quite a lot so shall we have a look inside so this is your title page wonderful daffodils we're almost in the month in the spring months which i can't wait for and i have just started spotting signs of daffodils and crocuses popping up around where i live which is just gorgeous so i am looking at maybe coloring that because i just think oh daffodils just because i'm in the mood because i've seen them <laughs> outside the house um and then we've got um this scan me page so you can scan this it'll take you to everything you need to know and um, they do have a facebook group and then there's still some decorative little florals around the edge even on that one so getting into it here we are so this is the first one should i bring you in a little bit let's bring you down so we can see a bit better so this one this one's now you have to think what a hobby it would be so this looks like it does look like they're doing some sort of spells doesn't it maybe tarot cards yeah, maybe tarot cards, spiritualists, something like that along those lines. But you'll find a lot of the pages in this particular book are quite detailed. Quite detailed. It might be nice if you use um, fine liners. I imagine they'll be good for some of these pages. So this one is... Oh, look, they're all walking. They're all going walking, aren't they, for a walk? Oh, they're cute as well, these animals in these books. So you can practice your watercolouring and your snow on this one. They are single-sided pages, which makes it nice as well. So this one's baking, something I'm not very good at, but you know, I wish to improve. <laughs> but there's lots of nice, it looks like a gorgeous cobbled floor, doesn't it, this? Which would be nice to colour. And there's bums in the oven. So we'll spin you around for this one. This one is chess, it looks like, doesn't it? It looks like they're playing a game of chess. Very cute. Got the moon outside, so it must be an evening. The little evening hobby. And then we've got the little mouse down here with some bigger chess pieces on the floor. It is gorgeous. Now, this one. Is this one calligraphy, maybe? Or an artist? It looks like an artist with his hat on, but this looks like calligraphy. Another very cute page, actually. Fountain pen at the bottom with his ink. And then we'll spin you back round again. So this one is mu Is this one music? Oh, it's camping. It's camping. I saw the little guitar there and I thought, oh, is it music hobby? No, it's camping. Camping, see? Spin it back round again. And what's this one? Is this one drawing? I think this one's drawing if i'm missing the bigger picture i'll show you it at the screen <laughs> i'm trying to guess what the hobbies are I'm, I'm guessing drawing they've all got pencils haven't they they're drawing a, a nice picture spin around again and this one is looks like some sort of bicycle race maybe they're doing racing because they've got a flag up so it makes me think that this is a race Oh, just bicycle riding, bike riding. So this one is, this one does look like music or dancing, doesn't it? It looks like they're dancing. She's playing the music and they're dancing. Very cute. Little flamingo, or is it a stork? Flamingo, stork. And a frog and a mouse on that page. So this one, what's this one? I think this one's drawing again, isn't it? Or is it, no, oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? The drawing, and then he's confusing me because it looks like he's switching a light off. Hmm. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And then I thought, with them drawing on this big board over here, I thought, are they, are they having a game of shreds over here? <laughs> I don't know. You can make your own interpretation, can't you? This is busy. Very busy. So this looks like an allotment or some sort of farming. So they're doing farming. They've got the carrots all in the lines. The, is that lettuce or cabbage? <laughs> Forgive me. But yeah, this is where fine liners will come into play on pages like this because it's just teeny tiny. These little bits up here are really small as well. Fishing! Can spot that one. I know what that one is. <laughs> fishing. My partner's dad used to go fishing all the time when he was a bit younger. And he used to go night fishing as well. And he used to get all the gear on to keep himself warm at night and fill up his flask and take his flask and his sandwiches. Yeah, that's cute. Oh, mechanics of some kind, is it? Some sort of mechanics. I'm listening to tunes at the same time. That one's funny, that. <laughs> Look at that little mouse. Size of his ears. <laughs> That's cute. So this one, floristry. I'm thinking floristry. Looks like they're putting some flowers together. Maybe it's a flower shop. It definitely looks like some kind of floristry going on here. <laughs> very cute. And another very detailed page. This one is knitting. Something I can never, ever do. Something I've always struggled with. No matter how many people show me, cannot get the hang of it. But they looks like they're knitting scarves. They're very long, aren't they? Looks like they're doing scarves there. Very cute. Turn this one round. What have we got on this page? Looks like some sort of art again. Oh, face painting. Is it face painting? Or makeup? Is it makeup artist? trying to look at all the little portions there's lipstick so i think it's some sort of makeup it's either a makeup artist or face painting isn't it definitely <laughs> how cute is that so this one is meditation i'm guessing you this little cat looks like he's meditating and then we've got a very zen looking statue over here candles <laughs> How cute is this book? How cute. What's this one? What have we got here? Hmm. Looks like more painting. There's the palette. She's got a paintbrush. There's a little easel with paintings on. Definitely, isn't it? Definitely painting. There's so many elements on this page, though. Everything's teeny tiny. Like you've got the sort of big artwork at the top where it's a very big floral, big houses, and then you get to the bottom bit and you think, oh my, get the fine liners out. Because all the little tiny stones and the flowers and the little, little teeny tiny leaves and everything. This is tiny. This would need fine liners, guys. Like, it is... See you time. Here, what do we have? What hobby do we have here? Maybe cat collecting. Maybe this is the cat lady. I don't know. It looks like there's lots of cats and I'm not sure what else is going on. <laughs> is this some sort of pet shop? Do we think it's a pet shop? I'm not quite sure what hobby this is. <laughs> These like the crazy cat lady collecting cats. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm missing this one. What do you think? What do you think it is? So this one's cute. I might colour this just because I think it's sort of the largest florals that I've seen flipping through this book so far. So it's either going to be the turtle page or a couple of flowers on here to start with, I think definitely oh this is photography luke taking a picture of her and then we've got the camera down here the camera film roll tripod <laughs> very cute very cute i'm just looking at these florals here they kind of look like eyeballs <laughs> in a weird way and look 
kind of look a bit freaky like eyeballs. Oh, pottery. <gasps> pottery. I've been loving a program on Channel 4. Um, so, oh, I keep forgetting the name of it. It's something like the Great British Pottery Throwdown. Is that the name of it? And they've got to compete making, they've got different challenges every week to create these pots and put the artwork on them and create different things. I love it, me. I've never tried my hand at pottery, but I always think it looks really fun. People say it's really hard, but I, I would never know. I've never tried it. Has anyone tried it? <laughs> but we've got all the pots behind him. Really beautiful one, that actually, and it's not too busy. Where all the other pages have had quite a lot of really teeny tiny elements these are quite large so this is quite a fun one quite a fun one to do and then let's turn around for this page this is a all right as well this isn't too busy this is jigsaws jigsaws here very cute oh rubik's cube as well so it must be games must be different kinds of games And then what have we got here? Reading. Oh, look. Little hedgehogs reading. So that's that little hobby. And then we've got painting again, I think. Painting. There's paint all over that tortoise. And maybe paint jars up here. She's got some paint. Oh, sailing. Do we think this is sailing? Definitely, isn't it? Definitely, definitely a boat. Oh, scuba diving. <laughs> How cute is that one? That would be nice. Um, the paper will take it as well because it's thick. I can see some Derwent Inktense pencils being quite nice. Just, I know the range of colours that they do in that set are really nice for your sort of sea, underwater scenes and your corals. I think they would look really nice. On this page and you don't need much water with the Derwent Ink Tents either. You do activate them with water but you don't need much. Really nice. And then what have we got here? What's this hobby? What's this hobby? Mm, there's an emergency vehicle just going past my house if you hear that noise. Do apologise. You might want to remove your earphones or your headset. There it's gone. This looks like some sort of um statue isn't it this is a statue i think so it's sculpting is that what they call it a sculpting then we've got sewing something else i'm totally rubbish at absolutely pants at that cannot sew for nothing we've got all the little jars with the buttons in as well very cute and then what have we got here? Yoga. <laughs> it's either yoga or Pilates. I've never been to either of them, so I wouldn't know, but I'd have a guess at yoga on that one. I'd have a guess at yoga. <laughs> Cute. Or gymnastics, maybe, because they've got these ring things here. That one's got those, those rings. And then, what's this one? What is this one? What are they doing here? This looks like a tape measure. Tape measure. What's this? Wood saw. Are they building something? Oh, this is a workbench. This is a workbench. They're building something. Cause we've got the hammer up there. We've got the saws on the shelf. The, what do you call this? Axe. <laughs> Hammers. Yeah. It's like a workbench. So... Maybe they're doing some woodwork, something like that. Who knows? Again, not something I'm very good at. And that is it. How beautiful is that? How cute. So I'm going to colour a page now, guys. Now I'm thinking I might use some gouache because I've seen that quite a few colourists have flipped through this book at the moment and been colouring pages from it. And I think... If I use my gouache to colour in it, something a bit different. And then you can see how a more wet medium reacts on this paper, maybe. So I'll get all my stuff together and then I'll be right back. So I'm back now. 
I've got my gouache. I'm going to pull this camera down because we're going to do this page. And I'm just going to do the florals as real time because I think I'm not going to have um, enough storage on my phone to do the whole page on camera. So I hope just me showing you how I'm going to do these florals with the gouache. I hope that you found that really um, entertaining. <laughs> Who knows? So I'm going to use these Windsor and Newton gouaches. And I'm going to go for some yellow, orange and red tones on the flowers so i'm just going to mix some of these colors up so i'm going to pull my reds and my yellow tones out and mix those together because obviously if you didn't know by now red and yellow makes orange maybe try a bit that that'll mix quite a nice color and i've got a white if i need to brighten anything up a little bit maybe pop some highlights in so i am just using you'll have to excuse my mocky palette but i'm using this Karen Dash palette. Now this side I always use for the Nia Colour 2 crayons. I don't know if you've heard of those. But I do do that because it's textured. And then on the opposite side it's smooth. I use for my... I have used for acrylics in the past. Which is sort of heard and done here now. But I do use it for my gouache as well. Just to pop on this palette. So we'll start putting some colours down. And then I'll start mixing them together. And I'll have to apologise at the state of my hands when I've done painting because I'm a messy artist. I'm not one of these who you see use pristine and, and clean. <laughs> I'm not at all. I'm so messy. So I'm going to pop the tiniest bits of red there to mix those. That will mix um, into different oranges, which you'll see in a moment. And then I'm going to use this darker one to mix with a bit of red and see what that looks like oh that's a bit wa more watery than the rest made a bit of a mess there so i'm going to use the primary red if i need any more or less i can mix it up so i'm going to get one of my paint brushes to give this a little mix i've got some tissue at the side of me as well just so i can wipe off my paint brushes so let's see what this so that's a nice rust color that we've created there i would call that rust clean up the brush. so that might be nice for the shadows any shadows i do that might be nice for let's see oh maybe i'll put too much red in this that's a very very deep that's like a blood orange is that what you call it? Like a blood orange? That might be. Might have to put some more yellow into that one. I bet I've done it here as well. Use too much red. You only need the tiniest, tiniest amount of red. I always get carried away, but you know, you can remix and whatnot. The thing is with gouache as well, this orange might be okay because with gouache, your dark colours dry lighter and your light colours dry darker. So yeah, try and work that out in your head. <laughs> I'm going to add some more yellow to this one because I do want a lighter. I do really want a lighter colour. There we go. Oh, I'm getting it all over my fingers already. See, I'm very messy. Very messy. The good thing is with gouache as well. Say I mixed too much paint for what I needed on this palette. You can actually just keep it on your palette and reactivate it when the time comes to do a new painting. So that's a nice colour because obviously it's going to dry lighter as well as I've just mentioned. It will dry lighter. And then I'm going to put a blob of yellow on just to keep yellow. So that we can add some nice yellow tones into there as well. Possibly in the middle of the flower I might do the full on yellow but we'll see so you can see what colors i'm working with there now so i can pop those to the side i am going to pick out what kind of brush do i want i don't want something too manual yeah for the middle i want i want one of my fine detail brushes because it's quite it's quite thin in the middle actually so should we get started i'm going to go straight in with the yellows in the center so straight in don't worry about going any over any liner because you sort of make 
your own lines with gouache if that makes sense you can really build on the color to thicken it up and then what i like to do instead is put the white round the edges rather than having a black outline have a white one at the end so we'll see anyway we'll see we'll see how we get on There we go. So I'm going to add in a little touch now of the brown type of colour, so the rusty colour, at the base of them. I'm going to add a little bit. Now, if you find it's not blending as nice as you want you can add more water to your brush but I think it's it's going to blend all right at the minute just have to work with it I think I'm going to get my even thinner brush one second I've got an even an even thinner one here touch more I'm gonna add some water to this there we go now I'm gonna go in with the other petals so I'll get the larger brush again get the larger brush so I'm going to go in with the darker shade of the orange first, so I'm going to use this one. Let's get a nice amount on the brush. Drop that off. And I'm going to do this colour on the outside of the leaves. So on these flowers I'm going to make them lighter in the centre. So the dark shades on the edge. The good thing with gouache, I find it very versatile because I have, I've obviously worked with watercolour in the past but I find you don't have much control over the watercolour or I don't personally. Um, with gouache, if you use it at its thicker consistency, you can really have a bit more control over it and that's what I like, I like the variation. So I'm going to add some water to this now, make it a bit looser and then I'm going to dip into my lighter orange and blend the two colours together. I'll use water to make it blend easier in a second. Dipping into my water there. And just softening the edges. If you feel like your brush is getting too loaded again, just dip back into the water. I'm going to drag this colour into that centre in a minute so hopefully keeping it even lighter while softening that edge as well not bothered that we've gone over there because we are using this same colour over that side as well so there we go and do the same for all those other petals We'll start with this one. The end is my most favourite bit because that's the bit where you can put all your little details in. So once the petals dry, you can then go in with your gouache as at its thickest consistency and you can put in any sort of little details you want to. You can sort of do what you want. 
I might choose to put some of these lines in. See where the black line art is there? I might choose to put some of them in with a white at the end. But of course, you, it has to be completely dry. Otherwise, the white's just going to merge into everything. And that's not what you want. <laughs> so, I want to move my water a bit closer to it. I've made that mistake once with my water. I spilt it all over my desk and almost all over one of my paintings. So, it wasn't good. Make sure your water's um, <laughs> not going to be spilt. off again if you feel like your water is getting too mucky um you can just go and get fresh water whenever you feel i'm going to completely clean my brush off so that we can get that nice lighter color into the center and we just drag we just drag this color into the middle too much water on my brush there let me try and lift some so if you just put your brush on it'll soak up the water like that it's just a bit too much that's all drag that color through there we go and they don't have to be the same you like the variation because flowers are different you know they're not the exact same Petals are very rarely, they're exactly the same. You'll always have some little differences within petals. So going on to this one now. I might even change it up for the flower at the side of it. Instead of being lighter in the centre, I might put lighter on the edge. So you can change it up like that as well and make it quite nice. If you wasn't confident going in with the white gel pen detail, uh, the white detailing at the end with the gouache, you could use a white gel pen. That's what I was coming around to say. Instead of a white gouache, you could use a white gel pen. Maybe. I think that would go over. Or a um, Posca pen might work better. I like how much faster paint is. You know, sometimes it's nice to sit down with coloured pencils and I do love my coloured pencils. And then other times I think it's just nice to do something a bit quicker, cover an area more quickly. <laughs> so if I was doing with this with pencils, I'd still be on the first petal. So I'm cleaning off my brush completely again now to drag this colour through to the centre and soften the edges. These need softening here, so I'm going to wet my brush again a little bit. Just drag this colour down there a bit more. On this one. Soften up these edges. There we go. Next petal. So is there anything that scares you about using gouache or watercolour? Or maybe even acrylic paints because you can use acrylic paints in books as well. I have only used them for backgrounds acrylic paints in books at the moment. I've never actually used them for detailed work. But you can do, there's nothing stopping you. And because you don't need much water with acrylic paint, um, it really is a good medium for colouring books actually. Some 
water. Now you can, if you want, to try and blend it a bit nicer. Instead of doing your circles up here, you can. Let me bring you in. Sort of flick lines down. Like that. I'm going to clean my brush off again. I'm just going to soften that line there. It's just gone a bit weird. And that one is pooling now. So what's happening? Because the book's not straight. Oh, I'm zoomed in. Because the book's not straight, it's starting to pool down here a little bit. Maybe less water than what I'm using is needed I'm going to lift some of that water now on here that's better there we go I'm going to zoom you back out a bit now because I keep going off screen because I'm forgetting how zoomed in I am you can see it just pooling here now at the bottom you can see how wet it is just need to lift some of that colour. You can lift it and then wipe your brush off. Last petal and then I can move on to the next one and show you how I'll do it the opposite way around. So lighter on the edges. Go. I'm going to dip into some water now and lighten up my brush. There we go. So I'm going to move on to the second flower now. So the second flower I'm going to do darker in the middle. So I am going to go in with my darkest orange. But first I'm going to do this middle yellow bit. So going in with the yellow. I don't want my hand to be in the way. I am just doing the flowers for this video, but if you want to see the completed page, please do head over to my Instagram page. It's the same name as it is over here, so it's Cursed to Colour and Sketch. It's also linked in the description of this video. And at some point, the finished page will be over there. And I will obviously be tagging Colliar in the post. So if you want to head over to Colliar's Instagram page as well. If you miss it on my Instagram, you might catch it on theirs. There we go. So again, I'm going to add a bit of the rust type colour that I mixed just onto the edges and then we'll blend, blend it in in a second. I'll just put the little blobs down first. Just mapping out where I want it. And I can add some water and give it a little bit of a blend. 
I really do rate the Windsor and Newton gouaches if you're doing any sort of artwork. Obviously, if you're only using gouache and colouring books, then any budget brand is nice in colouring books. Um, your jelly gouache should be fine in colouring books, but if you're planning on doing any artwork, I recommend the Windsor and Newton gouache. Because they are so much nicer. So much nicer. There we go. So now I'm going to go into the centre. And we're going to use a lighter colour on this one. So I'm actually going to use a bit of my yellow to mix an even lighter orange to go into the centre. This one's going to be lighter. So let's get into it, shall we? I've really got this brush loaded up a bit too much. Got it loaded up a bit too much. Oh, I wanted the middle dark on this one, didn't I? Right, go back in. <laughs> the good thing with gouache is that you can mix them so I can add dark back in, don't worry. Clean your brush off this. We can add dark over the top. It's fine. It's all good. We're all human here. We're all human. Let me clean off that drip before it drips onto the page. So there, we're dark in the centre again now. We're dark. And I can blend it out with the water in a second. I just want to get that depth over the top of it first. There we go. We're lighter on the edges on this flower, Custer. Remind yourself. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to use this light colour in the middle. And then I'm going to pop a yellow on the edges. Like that. And then we'll get the water added and just make it a nice blend. Not too worried if I go over anything, like I've just gone over a little bit of the leaf there, but it doesn't worry me because gouache goes over everything. Gouache goes over everything. In its thickest form. Anyway, that is. Right, wetting my brush. I'm going to blend this a bit better. I'm going to use the lines technique, so I'm going to go down in lines. And drag that colour through like that. quite nice can even dip into the darker colour and add some more of the dark at the top oh, I quite like that it's quite nice isn't it it's a bit different from this one so going on to the other petals. Darkest colour there. Let's get some yellows on the edge. This will be a nice contrast as well. The the lightest yellow going against this this flower here. It'll make it stand out a bit better than if I was going dark orange onto dark orange. I 
I love this colour combo for butterflies as well. You sort of oranges going into your yellows. It's really pretty. Right, I'm gonna add the water now. I have to change my water soon, it's looking a bit murky. So I'll just blend that yellow in. And then we can do the strokes. A lot more water on this one. There we go. Next leaf time. I have to say I can't wait to get in with those white details. Just add in a bit more darkness in the center. I'm gonna blend it out. I'm thinking about doing some dotting detail in the centre of the flower with the white at the end. I think that would look really nice. You'll see what I mean when I come to it. But it is literally just putting dots, white dots all in the centre. Does anybody own any of Kalia's books already? Are you planning on purchasing this one to add to your collection or is it a first time Kalia purchase that you're going to get? The link to this will be in the description of my video. So just click on that, it'll take you straight to where you can purchase it. But I have got a few of these books now. And they are really nice to colour in regarding the paper. The paper's lovely. Just going to soak a bit of that water up. There's a bit too much water. You know what, I'm hoping it's not gone through because I didn't put a piece of paper underneath. <laughs> Skill barrier guys, but I think it'll be alright. Like I say, it's really thick paper, so we shall see. 
I'll show you at the end once it's all dry we'll see if it's um, bled through any. It shouldn't do, it really shouldn't do. I mean we've only got the tiniest tiniest bit of warping and I mean the tiniest tiniest bit but that's the sheer amount of water that I'm using because I'm using quite a bit of water to blend the colours together I'm just going to buff out this edge a little bit before I put the yellow on this time Clean off my brush now. If there's any areas you feel like you're not quite loving once it's dry and you think, oh no, but it's dry now, you can reactivate and move things around like this little bit here I'm not hit up on this little bit that's scabbard there but if I wet my brush I can move it so I can move the colour around and just flick out some of these colours a bit more Add more of that dark. I can play around for hours with paints, I really can. I could be here till Christmas. we go that's where you can add in your details as well once it's started drying if you do want to go in with some flex you're know, just following what the artist has already created with the black line art this is what i mean about putting the details in once it's dry you can go ahead and put the details in on top like this i'm just going to spin the boot round because it's easier for me <laughs> It's a bit hard to try and get a spin on it. Yeah, I love doing this bit. It's like, it's the therapeutic part. The flicking motion. <laughs> it's the same when I'm colouring her. Do the same flicking motion, I really like it. You could even do this here as well. So you can bring some out from the middle, it's up to you, you don't have to, but you can. Makes it quite nice just putting those details in, doesn't it? Put as little as, or as much as you want into there. I'm going to spin you around again, I might get a good angle on here. So 
I'm just going to do these, the edges of these two petals. Just to finish this flower off. Remember as well that your dark paint dries lighter, so if you think this is too prominent when you're initially putting it down, remember that it will dry lighter than what you what it appears at the moment. Just gonna add some more water to my paint. It's drying up a little bit. That's better. There we go. Last little petal. <laughs> Spinning you around again a little bit, guys. There we go, and look how much nicer it is when you put those little details in. So I'm going to do a similar thing with this one. I'm going to start in the centre where we have got that dark a bit. And I'm going to flick these little ones outwards. This one won't be as prominent in the centre because it's already dark in the centre. You can pull some of the lines through the lighter areas. You can even put a few on the edge. Spin you around again. I will say to pop in the little details you were better with some fine detail brushes so you can get a really nice set of fine detail brushes cheap off Amazon that's where I got mine from They're quite nice If I am a bit quiet, it's my concentration mode, guys. Concentration mode. So when I'm doing anything like this, I do normally time-lapse things. But I think sometimes it's nice to do things in real time, then you can see a bit better. Me building, building up. And how I'm doing it. A bit better can't you maybe even follow along with some of the painting if you're feeling brave enough i really like how this first one's looking really like that it's really pretty so sorry if my hand's in the way a little moment but i can't i 
need the right angle on um, the boot when I'm trying to get the little details in. Otherwise it will turn out a bit wonky, a bit wonky. I'll do the last side over here. I think I'll abandon the last flower for now. I don't think I'm going to have time to get that one coloured. But I will go back in to the first flower with the white detailing and show you how we finish one of the flowers off. I think that'll be a bit better, wouldn't it? into the dark. Also I'm running out of the colour I mixed. <laughs> it might take some time to mix up the exact same colour. So I am I'm running out. I'm using the scraps now. Let's turn you around a little bit this way. Oh, I love that. How pretty is that? So, I'm going to get some of my white out. Pop some of this white. This is the zinc white in the Windsor and Newton. Pop a little bit of that on the side. I'm going to get my smallest detail brush. I'll show it you in a minute when I get it out. It's the really teeny tiny one. It is really small. So, this is it. And look, I've got paint all over me, apologise. It's really, really small. It's just started fraying a little bit. I think I've been a bit too rough with it. But it's teeny tiny. Now I'm not going to water down the white. We want it thick because we're going to be doing details with it. We want it to be in its thick consistency. So... I'm going to start, don't need to bring you in even further <laughs> and I'll put some dotting detailing on here. So I am literally just putting little dots everywhere, don't have to be perfect circles or anything like that. The good thing about painting is that it's you, it's however you're doing it, everything's different and unique isn't it? I'm just going to fill up most of this with the white. Leaving room for a little bit of that yellow to, sh to come through in some places. There we go, I just think it makes it more interesting. I always like adding things. <laughs> I always like adding things to a page. And then if you wanted to do any other detailing, if you wanted some little highlights on the ends of the flowers, you could put very carefully some very thin little lines around the edge here and there. If you want to add a bit of water, that might help this help you drag it up a bit better but I'm trying to be careful because I don't want a massive line here just want little bits of something let's pop 
pops them around this side. They don't have to be continuous lines either when you're putting these highlights in, you can sort of break off and then pop another one in. Even some dots like that. It's just all something a bit different, isn't it? It just adds something to the page, I think. I just like doing it. <laughs> I'm just a serial fusser. Like, I can't leave pages alone, I just fuss with them. And then we'll put some on this little flower. So again, going into the centre with the dotting first. And you might think, well, if she was doing this, why has she gone in? Why has she painted it all yellow at first? But that's because it still comes through. We're leaving some of that yellow to shine through the centre. I hope I've helped you to be a bit braver with colouring pages anyway. If you take anything away from this, it's to just go for it. I wasn't I had a little idea about where I wanted to go with this page, but I wasn't fully prepped. So when I first started doing this, I didn't know I was gonna put this white detailing in the centre. I didn't know I was gonna do the flicks at the end. Um it's just all going with the flow and seeing where the paint takes you. <laughs> seeing where the paint and creat creativity takes you. And just go for it. Because at the end of the day, what's the worst that can happen? So that's the centre of that one. Now I'm going to go in with the same little white, white details. So for this, I'm going to just water down my paint a little bit. Not too much, but you do want it to still be a bit... You want it to be a bit creamy, almost. I'm going to pop some of those little highlights in. Oh, a bit of a dot on that one. <laughs> Round again, probably getting seasick with all the turning I'm doing, aren't you? Probably are. There we go so i'm going to zoom you back out you'll probably see all the chaos on my desk but ignore it that's what happens when you do painting but it's all fun and games <laughs> it's all fun and games so we'll bring you back up see all the messes over there see it all the aftermath my tissue my paints aftermath there we go <laughs> but we're back to the page so i think this has turned out quite nice Obviously, I've not had time to do absolutely everything in real time. But what I've done there is I've given you the tools to be able to recreate this yourself, hopefully. And give you a bit of confidence to try it. So the third flower, I'll just do the exact same as the other two. And maybe these two will be a bit different because they're, they're slightly different flowers, aren't they? But same sort of thing. And then I don't think I'll be able to use my gouache for all of this page. There's some really teeny, teeny tiny details on this page. But I will probably use the coloured pencils.
for the rest of it please do check out my instagram and Kulia's instagram and facebook um, that's where i'll be posting the completed page when it's finished do drop in the description of my video and find the link to purchase this book it will send you directly to it it's a gorgeous book really good quality paper i can't stress that enough and just just gorgeous illustrations out there it's a really fun one so i hope you enjoyed watching this please do hit me a big thumbs up on the way out and subscribe if you're new and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching bye bye